Alrighty, Pretender here back with another Honkai Star Rock guide and today I'm going to be providing a guide for what you should be doing for the 300% event planner ornaments drop rate. Right as this video comes out, this event will be on all servers so you are able to farm it now. It's already been out on Asia and EU, but now with this video it's out on NA so now every server can do this. So yeah, as I'm recording this, it's not out, but when you do see this video, it will be out. So I'm here to provide a guide on what you should be choosing and how you can get the best bank out of this event. Before I get to the video, drop a like, hit sub, turn on bell icon for more videos like this. I'm sorry if I sound a bit nasally, I am pretty sick. After my birthday, I was standing up for a little while, so a little sick, but let's get straight into it. So as we do know, we have World 3 all the way now up to World 9. It's going to be a pretty big question of which ones you should be farming because a lot of relic sets are going to be good for other characters like Glamoth is really good, Panacone really good for other characters that are supports. World 9 is hot right now because of Akron and the Izumo set being the best one for her. So the best way you can bank out of this event is going to be choosing one world where both ornaments are a good value option. As we do know there are some worlds where it's kind of like a 50-50 like this is a prime example this effect hit rate one can be really good while wow, this one is absolute garbage so this is like playing a 50 50. so the best way to optimize your farming is going to be choosing a world where both rewards can be good this will obviously depend player to player like this world will be great for a lot of people because glamoth is good on some characters that are fast Panacone, fantastic set good for something like running jinglu with payla putting this on payla to increase jinglu's damage dealt very nice modern quantum this is the best on everyone that isn't the dps very good set glamoth E2 Zele, it's really good. Kafka, best in slot. It becomes best in slot for a lot of characters that can hit that 160 speed. Very, very good set. World 7 is another fantastic option because you do have Rural Arena, which is great for anyone doing basic tech or skill damage mainly. And then Broken Keel is practically a best in slot for almost every sustained character. And even if it isn't, it's one of the best options you can use because it's just giving everyone free crit damage and also providing some effect rest to make the actual effect easier to get. So again, look at what you need, and that's how you prioritize it. I will say right now, a really good world will actually be World 9. Not only is the Izumo set going to be really good with Akron, this can also be used with someone, if you are someone that has or is planning to run a Topaz ratio comp, this does work with them, because if you put this on both of them, both of them are on the hunt path, so it works directly together. That's an option with Akron, again, it's best in slot. The other set is also really good, especially for pure fiction characters. If you don't have many of these, it's going to be fantastic for pure fiction characters. So getting either or is going to be fantastic. Because let's say you don't get the easy set you want for your Akron. And now you have a bunch of these, you might get a good one. And now you have a really good set for your pure fiction DPS. Another very much recommended world is going to be World 7. Because Merlin Arena is really good. Someone like Downing or Jing Lu. Anyone that does basic attack or skill damage will benefit from this greatly. And Broken Keel is, again, so universal as a state slash support characters. Giving everyone 10% crit damage that does stack, so if you have it on multiple people, so you give other people more crit damage. So this is another fantastic option, and it's another thing where you aren't really playing on 50-50 on the relics you get. Past those two worlds, it does definitely depend on what you want, such as like World 6, you... Well, a lot of people are going to want Inner Tosado because this is going to be the best for Evan Shuren mainly. Just because the main damage from him comes up from the ultimate and follow-up attack. So it's going to be a fantastic option. Bellabog, again, is practically only good on Jeopard. Some people are saying it's going to be great on Aventurian, but again, you don't really want to affect hit rate on Aventurian. So Bellabog kind of yikes, unless you really much use Jeopard. If you use Jeopard a lot and you want better relics for him, boom, this is a great place. Especially if you are having other characters like Topaz, Ratio, you're going to get Aventurian. Inner Sosato, fantastic for them because of follow-up attacks. So Inner Sasato is another fantastic option. If you are running this world, again, for most people it's going to be 50-50, but if you do have a Jeopard, or I guess even the Fire MC is another option, Bellabog isn't going to be the worst for you, but is still there. So World 3, I don't personally recommend doing this because Space Stealization is only really one you use when you kind of just have pieces that are good laying around and you don't want to farm another one. With Ageless, it's the same case with Space Stealization, but again, this becomes better for characters that are on dot team so if you're on a dot team providing this on the sustained character on that team is nice because they benefit from the attack unlike broken keel where they don't really benefit from the crit damage they will benefit more from the attack percent well this is a nice option because space ceiling station practically works on every dps and then fleet of the ages practically works on any support as well it is an option but i wouldn't recommend it because these are sort of outshadowed by other things already now past that you are practically playing a form of risk of just a 50-50 because the only world you'll benefit the most is world 9 because it's new and has two good sets. World 7 has two good sets. World 6 can have two good sets depending on what you're using but it can be a 50-50. And then world 3 technically also has two good sets but again I don't really recommend it. Past that, world 4 I would not recommend doing either of these. I'm not gonna lie, don't do it on world 4. 
world 5 effect hit reset on something like welt black swan someone like that is going to be really good so this is an option but you also are running 50 50 with this garbage set right here so you are definitely taking chances with that world a is another fantastic option i didn't say because i guess i did say but again glabot's gonna be really good Peta Cody again if you are running on a mono quantum team is really good mono imaginary is gonna be kind of possible and surprisingly a good amount of people are actually watching about mono imaginary so running this on yukong or something would be nice but again mainly for something like mono quantum or if you are running payload with jinglu which is really common that is really good on her so you can up jinglu's damage even higher Glamoth, again, it really depends if you have someone that can hit 160 speed because it is still the best in soft for some characters that can get to 135 speed. Even at 135 speed, it does become some of the best in slots. At 160 speed, it practically becomes the most value you can get out of damage in a planner ornament. So at 160 speed, it becomes really good for a lot of characters. But again, there isn't that many characters that can get all the way up to 160 speed. Prime examples is Kafka with their light code can easily get it. Zelia E2, easily free. It's so free to get it with her. I can't think of any other examples on the top of my head, but those two are like prime examples where you would just practically run Glamoth if you have an E2 Zele, or if you have Kafka with a Light code. And then again, moving on to World 9, this is the new set. This is probably what most people will use it on, which again, good news for you guys who want to completely spend on this. It is completely fine because again, Izumo set gonna be fantastic for your Akron if you are farming it for her. And if you do get some of these pieces, don't worry because this is actually going to be the best set you can run in Pure Fiction, making your Pure Fiction DPSs hit even harder getting them free crit damage, getting better pieces, obviously making them stronger, making pure fiction a lot more clearable for most people. So yeah, that's pretty much how you want to go about doing it. You mainly want to prioritize ones that give you the most bang for your buck. Obviously, you want to make sure they have two good sets, as I've mentioned multiple times now, because that is the best way you can make out of this 200%. Because you don't want to go into one of these. Let's say you go into World 6, for example, and you don't use Jeopard or you don't use Fire MC. You really want Inner Auto. You can have the 300% and you can still just get nothing but Bellabog pieces and you can get very few Inertial Solo pieces that suck. Sadly, that is the law of gacha. But again, quick rundown. World 3, don't really recommend it, but it is one of the worlds where two of the pieces will be good. Both of these are fine. Again, they usually have better options now, especially Space Stealing Station. But Aegis, if you are for a dot set, you can run out the dot support on that team. World 4, do not recommend it whatsoever. World 5, it's another one I don't really recommend because this set is actually just so bad. But the effect hit set is pretty good, so if you want some of this, you can. But remember, this is practically one of the worst plant ornaments in the game. World 6 is not a bad idea. Again, it's very good for people that have Jeopard or Fire MC and want to get better pieces for them. Because this becomes good. It is also not a really good for anyone that's main damage comes from ultimate or follow-up attacks. So another fantastic option there. World 7 is one of the best options because Rudal and Arena are really good and then Broken Kill really good for practically any supports that sustain. So fantastic option there. World 8 is also a pretty good option. I say pretty good rather than fantastic because there is a lot of people that can't really use Glamoth. But again, Glamoth hitting the speed thresholds makes it the best in stuff for a lot of DPSs. Petacone, for the most part, you want to have it on modern quantum teams or running it with a pair of DPS where another unit is that same type. So getting 10% damage out is really nice. And then World 9, for Akron fans, very, very good world to farm because again, best in software Akron can also be used with Ratio Topaz if you're running that combo because they're both Hunt. And then this is going to be really good for anyone you use in Pure Fiction. I do have a video on that, so you definitely can check that out. What you might be confused about me saying why it's good in Pure Fiction. 4% crit rate, getting crit damage for every time you kill someone stacking up to 10 times, getting up to 40% crit damage is a better bonus than most, practically, I'm just going to say all planner ornaments that we have in the selection. So, fantastic world you can farm. And that has been the video. Hope you guys found the video helpful. Let me know what you guys will be farming. And yeah, peace out.